Okay, in this second part of dimensional analysis, we want to look at unit conversions using multiple dimensions. By multiple dimensions, we mean measurements that are in two or three dimensions, such as measurements of area, meters squared, centimeters squared, or volume, meters cubed, centimeters cubed. We can't really treat any of this by simply moving a decimal point. This is where the King-Henry method that you learned earlier in school does not work and completely breaks down. This is where dimensional analysis becomes so incredibly important. And this is always an area that students really struggle with because it is something that you cannot do using your previous methods. In this case, dimensional analysis is the best way to solve these problems and something that you should get really comfortable with. If you can do these multiple dimension problems, you can do any dimensional analysis problem. So let's say we want to know how many centimeters squared are in 4.3 meters squared. We're starting with and looking for the number of centimeters squared. That's our looking for data. We're given that there are 4.3 meters squared. So we need to get rid of meters and go to centimeters. But we don't know a conversion factor between meters squared and centimeters squared. We do know that for each meter, there's 100 centimeters. We're going to square that. So it ends up being 4.3 meters squared is equal to 100 squared, which is 10,000 centimeters squared, per 1. So instead of being 100 to 1, it's now 10,000 to 1. Multiply 4.3 by 10,000, and we get 43,000. Here's an example. A rectangular box has the size of 3.4 centimeters, 12.1 centimeters, and 8.6 centimeters. What are the volume of this box in centimeters cubed? What is the volume of the box in meters, millimeters cubed, and meters cubed? To start with, we need to figure out the volume in centimeters cubed. So I'm going to find the volume. I will do 3.4 centimeters times 12.1 centimeters times 8.6 centimeters. Plug this in your calculator. And you get 353.8. So this rectangular box has a volume of 353.8 centimeters cubed. And remember from what we watched previously that one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. So if we wanted to, we could say this also is 353.8 milliliters. Not what the question is asking, but that is a one-to-one -one conversion. So if we wanted to say convert that to liters, we could then go to liters. Now, we want to convert this to millimeters cubed and meters cubed. I'd like you to try each of those using the method you saw previously, with just like we showed in the previous slide. Press pause here, look and try those yourself, and then we'll go through them. Okay, first one, what is the volume of the box in millimeters cubed? So I want to find millimeters cubed. I know 353.8 centimeters cubed. My conversion factor, centimeters goes on the bottom, millimeters goes on the top. I know that there are 10 millimeters for every one centimeter. The way I would get this is I know that there are thousand millimeters in a meter. There are a hundred centimeters in a meter. So that's a ten times smaller for milli. So they're ten millimeters per centimeter. I need to cube this conversion factor to get the correct units. So if I were to rewrite this, 353.8 centimeters cubed. Ten cubed is a thousand. one cubed is one. Then I can solve 353.8 times 1,000 and I would get 358 353,800 millimeters cubed. The second one, how many meters cubed do we have? 
once again starting with 353.8 centimeters cubed. I want to cancel centimeters, go to meters, one meter for every 100 centimeters. We're going to need to cube the whole thing. So 353.8 centimeters cubed. One cubed is one. 100 cubed is one million. So in this case, I'm going to divide by one million. And I would get meters cubed, 0 0.000. 000 three, five, three, eight meters cubed. This is a decimal place here. So these conversions are a little different. You need to set up the conversion that you know between the base units, such as millimeters and centimeters, meters and centimeters. Cube or square that conversion, depending on whether you're dealing with volume or area, and then solve the problem.